Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. My name's Sonia and I talk on this channel about health, wellness, lifestyle trends and travel. So if you're interested in those things then you might like to subscribe below. I upload videos every Thursday. So thanks for joining me and let's get to viral illness and prevention tips. So what is influenza? It is a viral infection um, and it is currently can mutate as we currently see in the coronavirus. Um, the most predominant types of influenza are type A and B, and these are the ones that actually uh, are capable of infecting birds and mammal species, and this is you and I. We're humans and we're mammals, so uh, viral influenza can infect us quite easily. So the Centre for Disease Control actually estimate that in America alone that there are probably, the uh, US population will be, about 200,000 people are infected with the influenza virus and hospitalised with complications. So that's a lot of hospitalisations and out of this number about 36,000 of those people will die. So these are unnecessary deaths. You know, prevention uh, is quite simple and it's just uh, incorporating measures into our lifestyle, into our daily living that can help the, prevent the transmission of viruses. And we've seen this uh, with the World Health Organization and the Center for Disease Control in responding to the coronavirus. There's been isolation of people in their homes, um, public events have been cancelled, and of course, the borders to the country that is most affected have also been closed to international travel and visitors. So this inhibits the spread or the transmission from uh, uh, worldwide. So how do we prevent viral illnesses? Number one is take care of your health. So these are simple things like uh, sleeping well at night, so getting adequate rest and sleep, eating well, so eating good foods and whole foods, plant-based foods, um, less processed foods with carbohydrates and sugar. So we don't want them um, inhibiting our immune response. Uh, so, you know, eating good foods and of course moving more or exercising. So these are things that we can do every day to make sure that we stay healthy and give our immunity the best measure that we can in keeping us healthy. So number one is take care of your own health. Studies also show that those below the age of two and those greater than 65 are more prone to contracting viral illnesses. So if you're in these age groups, you need to be aware of that and definitely if you have any chronic health problems. And these are things like cardiovascular disease, congestive cardiac failure, diabetes and obesity. So that is taking care of your health. The second thing that we can do is to stay away from other sick people. You know, if you know someone's sick, you don't go and see them or you don't go and have a coffee with someone who's heavily flu, with heavily flu-like symptoms, do you? well, not by, not by choice, um, they should definitely tell you that they're unwell and they should cancel that. If you're a parent and you're in a parents group or a mother's group of, of, you know, parents group, you shouldn't go. You know, stay at home. If you work, stay at home. Your colleagues do not want what you have. So stay at home, rest and have fluids and simple analgesics and, you know, you'll feel better in a few days. However, if you are immunosuppressed for, and you're receiving treatment for something or, or whatever, um, you should be protecting yourself by wearing a face mask. And definitely, you know, places like doctor's surgery where sick people congregate to see a, a medical practitioner, there's lots of bugs and germs going on in that waiting room. Usually the receptionist will put a mask on a person who is coughing and snotting everywhere. Um, but if you feel like you don't want to be in that waiting room, just ask the receptionist if she can text you and go and wait in the car until you get a text. Uh, that's probably the best way to wait in a doctor's waiting room present when there's lots of um, airborne disease, uh, flu-like symptoms going around. 
So there's just some simple things that you can do and that way it um, isolates the infection and you're not spreading it to everyone else. Okay, so the third thing that you can do is hand hygiene. So our hands are great for picking things up, they, it helps us do so much, but they are the biggest source of transmission of bugs. Okay, as a health professional, hand hygiene is of major importance to preventing disease. So, you know, we alcohol rub a lot at work. We also wash our hands a lot. We're going from patient to patient equipment. These are all cleaned, okay? And, you know, it's the transmission of disease through um, our hand hygiene that we can also address in the community and in the public. So simple things like carrying alcohol gel with us, something like this, just some alcohol gel in your purse uh, and just, you know, using that when you think that you've touched maybe something like the grocery trolley or you've pushed the door of the bathroom um, that you've just used or or whatever. Um, you know, I do hate touching bathroom doors. I love toilets that actually have an in way like this where you don't have to push or touch any doors and the same way on the exit of these bathrooms. So alcohol gel is a great thing. However, I do find that um, being using alcohol gel a lot, especially at work for me, actually tends to dry my hands out. So when I'm at home and doing my own things, I like to use something like On Guard, which is a doTERRA product. Hang on, I'll just wait for the camera to focus on it, um, which is actually um, an essential oil, which is natural. I'll just drop a photo in maybe of that. Um, and I've just put it in a, it's in a little spray bottle. And instead of using alcohol rub, I actually use this spray and it goes on nice and wet. And it means that your hands can be rubbed together in between your fingers and it's great. Okay, I also use it for cleaning down coffee tables, um, anything. Hands, coffee tables, trolleys at shopping supermarkets after I've touched lift buttons. Um, I try not to touch escalator rails as well because lots of other people have done touch them as well. So it's just being aware of using your hands and what you, what you use them for and what you're touching and where everybody else has touched before you. So it gets a little bit like, oh, Jeremy buggy, but you know, to prevent disease or to prevent illness to yourself, um, the, the measures that you take actually help you. Okay, the biggest source of transmission of droplets would be mobile phones. Okay, we put them up to our face, we put them on bench tops, um, we do lots of things with our phones. People take them to the toilet with them as well. Um, you know, so our phones go in a lot of places and put, be put on lots of surfaces and they are constantly touched by us all day. We should be cleaning these phones, our phones, every day so to prevent transmission of any nasty bugs. If you're at work, a good idea is to actually, you know, rub down, um, clean down your bench either with some sort of antibacterial spray um, and just wipe it down, including your phones as well. Because, you know, when you talk, there's um, droplets that actually go onto the phone. So if you want to prevent infection, making sure that your desk area and phones are all wiped down daily is a good thing. The other thing that I think is very important is our cough and sneeze etiquette. Now, you know, we, I guess when I was little, I was taught to cough and cover my mouth like, <coughs> like that. Okay. So where have I just coughed on? My hands. And what do I do with my hands? I go and pick things up with them. If I sneeze, achoo, lots of droplet bugs here. Okay. Hands are not where we want to be sneezing or coughing. We want to be sneezing and coughing into our arms, okay? Into our elbows, to the corner of our elbows. This is cough and sneeze etiquette. So it should be, 
Okay, so that's coughing into our elbow and then definitely sneezing into our elbow as well. Our elbows don't pick up things. They're, this is a good way of reducing the transmission of droplet um, infections and, spread, and transmission to other people. So, uh, and another little thing is make sure your hands are in good condition as well so that they're moisturized, not cracked, your cuticles are nice. Okay, because these are also places where bugs like to hibernate and reproduce. Okay, so making sure that everything's in good condition on your hands and, and things like that as well. So the fourth thing is to quit smoking. Smoking, as we know, is not good for your health at all nor is it good for your wallet. Uh, so smoking actually inhibits the lung's ability to fight disease. And so quitting is a way of preventing that from happening. Also, um, those who passive smoke or secondhand smokers are also affected as much as those who smoke. So, you know, addressing those issues uh, will also help in the prevention of viral illnesses. Now, the fifth thing that you can do to prevent viral illnesses is to vaccinate. Okay, we vaccinate to keep communities free from influenza and of the bacterial complications that come with it, like community-acquired pneumonia. These are the things that people are hospitalised for and can die from. And we've mentioned those with chronic health conditions such as cardiovascular di disease, congestive cardiac failure, diabetes and obesity are the people who are most risk. So it's these people who also need to be being, uh, to receive vaccinations. And of course, um, those who are greater than the age of 65, those who come into contact with people all the time. So health professionals, and often these vaccines are free in your workplace. So you can take uh, the opportunity to be vaccinated, it doesn't mean that you're not going to get sick because those vaccinations don't cover everything, but it gives your immunity a boost and prevents um, the infection of a number of influenza type um, viruses. So as a community and as a nation, uh, these are the preventative measures that are in place. So if you're unsure about vaccination, you might like to go and see your uh, general practitioner and, and receive some advice and some inf information on vaccination. So, so I hope these prevention tips are helpful for you and that you have learned some new techniques and some new information today. If you want to see where this information has been acquired from, look at the links below and you can follow them and see the information as well. So that's it for me today and I'll see you next week and don't forget to subscribe. See ya!